Chapter 1 Every morning the students of Mr. Vargas's class pledged allegiance to the flag. They stood behind their desks with their hands on their hearts and their eyes on the flag and they said with one voice, I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Among them was a boy named Jake McCauley, and he too stood behind his desk with his eyes on a flag and a palm of his hand pressed to his heart. His palm was always a little sweaty because the classroom was hot, even in the morning, with all the shades down. Jake McCauley was proud to be an American. He was proud of the flag, and he was proud of liberty, and he was proud of justice for all. But when he pledged allegiance, he would only pretend to say words like the others. Instead, he would whisper to himself his own secret pledge. It went like this. I pledge to save my dad from the Russians and to bring him home so my dad and mom and I can be a regular family like we are supposed to be in America. This all happened a long time ago, in the year 1953, when the dads of some of Jake's friends from Mr. Vargas's class were fighting in the war in Korea. You could listen about that war on the radio and then talk about it at school with your friends, and Jake did, but his heart was not in it. Here's why. His dad still did not return from the old war, the big one, the one with the Nazis. That war had ended a million years ago, at least it felt like a million years to Jake. He just turned 12 in December. Why his dad did not return from that war was explained in a letter Jake's mother kept in a drawer beside her bed. The letter was from the United States Air Force, and it said that Jake's father went MIA, which meant missing in action. Missing in action did not mean Jake's father had been killed, of course. It only meant that the Air Force did not know where he was. Once Jake heard a program on the radio about American GIs imprisoned by the Russians and forced to work in the mines above the Arctic Circle. GI stood for galvanized iron, from which some of the army stuff was made, but Jake believed that the American soldiers were called GIs because they were strong as iron. His dad was surely as strong as iron, and he could surely survive working in the Russian mines until somebody would rescue him. Jake wrote a letter to the radio station asking them who could help you rescue his dad. When nobody answered his letter, Jake knew that even if his mom had checked it for spelling, he could not have counted on the radio station for help. He could not count on anyone and would have to say his dad all by himself. He even had a plan for how he would do it.